Okay, okay, before we actually get into episode 2, yes, I, I did miss an item in the very first episode. In fact, really early on in the first episode. So let's run back and actually get it. So run through this tunnel, fail to climb this hill, and then right in here we do have our very first piece of resource. We actually get 6 force regulators and 6 pneumatic helixes. You might want to pick those up because it'll make getting the full armor a lot easier. Whoops. But, hey, there you go. Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello and welcome back to the Surge walkthrough. Last time we did just the basics and got to our med station, replaced our power core, and now it is time to go out into the world, start stripping some of the gear off of these enemies, come back anytime, and getting some armor for our own. We only have the Lynx arm and leg, we need to get some more. And the way that it works is, in order to get the cuts, and we're going to see this momentarily, we need to build up energy. And then, as soon as the prompt is on the screen, if we hold it down the button, we will attempt to cut off that limb and get the materials from it. If you cut off the head, you'll get the head schematic or the parts. If you cut off the arm, you'll get the arm schematic or the parts. If you cut off the arm that's holding a weapon, you do have a chance of getting the weapon to drop as well as the arm parts. Same with the chest, same with the legs. So if you want to get a full set of armor, especially if you started with Lynx, which is the easiest to get because almost all enemies in this verse zone are wearing the Lynx, we want to focus on cutting off all of the pieces until we get enough resources to craft them ourselves. Now also, because I have power, I should be able to actually get a deflection. Eh, didn't quite get it there, but that's alright. I'm going to focus on the arms that are holding weapons for now. And you can see that my energy is building up, which is that bottom bar. It is now completely full. And there are two... Oops, I'm not paying attention. There are two different notches. Here we go. I'm going to talk about those in a moment. But we've now dismembered him. And in doing so, we get... The Spectre Bite. This is a new weapon. And I'm going to show off that weapon in a moment. But as you see, up in the top where it's energy, and my energy is now drained, because outside of combat, it does drain... There are two tick marks. One is for injections, and that is for the mechanized injection that I have equipped. It's a symbol of the hammer. I need that much energy in order to use that, and I'll show that in the next fight. The next one, which is about the 50% mark, that's how much energy is required in order to successfully get a cut. Now, as I said, I did just get a new weapon. This is a one-handed weapon, the Reclaim Piston. This is a single rigged weapon. You can see when I equip it, it actually attaches to the rig. Now, what does this mean in terms of combat? Very little other than the fact that this has a different moveset. And if we go in between them, we can see 18 damage, 31 damage. Medium impact, high impact. In other words, how capable is it to stagger enemies? Attack speed, obviously very self, obviously self-explanatory. Proficiency scaling. We haven't talked about proficiencies yet, but as you use weapon classes, you will increase your proficiency, which will increase the damage that you do. So it is a good idea not to just stick with one weapon, but to cycle through weapons so you can continue to increase your proficiency throughout the game. Now, something else you can do is you can actually favorite the weapons. And in doing so, it allows you to swap them out in the field without going into your inventory. So for example, right now I have the Spectre Bite, and then I have the Reclaim Piston. And I'm cycling through it just by using left on the D-pad. Now if I use right on the D-pad, I cycle through my injectables, which are in the top. So right there is my health, and that is my mechanized power increasing injection. Now I'm going to try and stay topped off just by using the aggression implant, which gives me 10% of my health for every execution. And I'm also going to focus on getting the arm pieces, because I do want to get some upgrades for my weapons that I have. Let's get him to attack. You can see that is much, much slower, but I'm definitely doing more damage. And one more. Get the cut. There we are. And because I got a cinematic, that means there's something new. And that is because we did just get the Vibro Cutter, which is a very, very cool single-handed weapon. In fact, right away, I'm going to unfavorite the piston and favorite the Vibro Cutter because I really, really like this weapon. It just looks so doggone cool. I love it. Now, we're cutting off pieces of enemies. If we go and we take a look at our inventory and take a look at broken parts, you can see I've gotten two 
broken or wrecked Link's arm gears, and that's because I cut off the arms of the two enemies I just fought. Over on the right-hand side, you can see I will get three Force Regulator Mark 1s per leg that's, or per arm that's scrapped. Once I get to the gear assembly in the med bay or in the med station, these will automatically break down. Now, if you want to see how much you need in order to create the armor you want, you go to schematics. So for schematics, for the arm, I need eight force regulators. So that is per. So I only need one because I do already have one on me. So I need to at least cut off one more arm in order to get enough force regulators to make this. Similarly with the leg, I need six pneumatic helixes. We haven't cut off any legs, so we'll take a look at that momentarily, but we don't need to get the schematics for these because we already have them. What we do need to get is the chest and the head, and then we'll be able to create full Link's armor. Right, so we are going to kill everyone even if we've already killed them before. But if we go right in here, and let's focus on getting a leg from this guy since we don't need... You know, we don't actually need his arm, although it would be good to get some weapon pieces. And there we go. I did just use the implant for more damage. There's the cut. We don't get a schematic, but we do get is the wrecked Link's leg gear. And once again, taking a look at that in our inventory, this will give me three pneumatic helixes. Once I break that down, I only need two of the leg gears in order to make a second leg. So if we get one more leg, then we can actually worry about making some armor. All right. Now let's see if we can actually get a backstab because yes, that is a thing. There we go. If you sneak up behind an enemy and you do the R1, you should kick them to their knees and get the backstab. Using my injection again. Building up that energy so I can get the cut. And one more hit should do it. There we go. Now we cut them in half and do we get the schematic? Yes, we do. It's schematic for the chest gear. Perfect. So once again, taking just a quick look, because I want to make sure this is familiar to everyone. This requires 12 rig armatures in order to create. And if I look at broken parts, I get three for every chess piece that I disassemble. So I need three more chess piece cuts in order to make a chess piece of my own. So just to once again reiterate, one more arm and I can make my other arm. One more leg, I can make my other leg. Three more chess pieces so I can get the chess. And I still need the head after all that. But right over here, overriding or overcharging this terminal is going to unlock this door. Now, there are going to be times where you find a terminal and you overcharge it, but you're not sure what it just did. What you can do is follow these conduits. You can see here, this terminal, the conduit, it does go straight up, but it also goes over, down, and it leads right to this door. If you follow the conduits, you'll always know what you just unlocked or what you just opened. Remember to cut body parts to get new equipment and crafting material. We know that. Now the first thing, let's see. All right, good. This guy does have a headpiece. If he doesn't have armor, you can do a finishing move, but you're not going to get anything for your troubles. And no backstab there, or uh, didn't get the ricochet off that, but that's okay. And I'm probably actually going to get a kill here. Yeah, unfortunate. Now, sometimes you will still get the body pieces if you get the kill instead of an execution, but it is pretty rare. It's pretty rare. All right, do you have head gear on? You do, so I should be able to just sneak up to you. Yep, knock him to his knees. Get a lot of bonus damage right away. And back up. And there we go. Sometimes it is better to simply back off and do the lightest attack you can so you don't actually kill them. He dropped some metal scrap, but he also gave us the headgear. Taking a look at that, just so I have an idea of how many I need. So I need 10 cortical processors, and if I were to guess, I would say I get three per hit. So I need, ooh, okay, so I need three more heads, one more leg, three more chests, and one more arm. Okay, so for the most part, we're going to focus on head and chest. Now this is where they introduce jumping. <laughs> and jumping is, it's all done with the left analog stick, so if I sprint using the left analog, and then tap it again, I jump. This allows you to climb on certain structures, like this, in case you want to get this item right here, some tungsten alloy. Now this is what's used to upgrade materials. If you cut off the weapon-wielding arm of many enemies, you should get tungsten alloy of various marks. Mark 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's your different tiers of upgrading. 
The nice thing is when you actually craft an item, you don't have to start at Mark 1. You can actually go as high as you have the resources available. And I'll show that when we actually start to build. Overcharging here. This is why you at least want to put one point into your core power. That way you can actually grab this terminal right away. And taking the exo lift down. And once again, if we follow that conduit, it is this one right here, right there. It's going around the bend and it led right to that door. If we didn't actually charge that, this door would not be open to us. All right, now I will open this door, but I, yeah, I did get this guy's attention. Luckily, I did get the iframe, so let's see. He does have head, so I will go ahead and focus on that. Knock you down, there we go, perfect, lots of damage. And then one more hit, probably going to unlock the cut option. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Staying nice and topped off with health and getting material to boot, which is excellent, all right. How about you, do you have headgear on? You do, wonderful, I'll take that please. And really, no ricochet. Oh, he got me, but that's all right. We're, uh, we're gonna cut him in half pretty soon, so we should be able to get some health and watch my health go up. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. One more headgear is going to do it and break this box. Aha. So there are items that are hidden in destructible environments. So make sure anything that can be broken, you are breaking so you get everything that's hidden. Also, you notice our proficiency did just go up which is perfect. That means we're gonna do some more damage with one-handed. In fact, I think at this point, I'll switch over to my uh, Spectre Bite so we can get the single rig proficiency going. Earth doesn't need resolve. Resolve is not the answer. Clearly, someone knew something was going on behind the scenes here at Creo and didn't actually agree with us sending rockets into space in order to <clears throat> save the world. New implant for us, the Sustaining Array V1. This is going to give us 25% less energy decay. So this will slow down the rate our energy goes down outside of attacking or outside of combat. This is really useful later on when you need your implants in order to survive. Not gonna use it right now, but something we will probably put on later on. And once again, another audio log. I'm gonna let this play while I keep fighting. We've had issues with Robert Weave again. This time about the exoskeleton program. He's refused to have the implant surgery. And we've explained it's hardly invasive, even offered to double his bonus. But no, thinks management will use it to control the workforce. And he even brought up his union nonsense again. If he poisons the others, it could put us months behind schedule. It's amazing. He doesn't see it as making his job easier. And I recommend termination. Yeah, we've put up with too much of his trash talking. So I just took a quick look at that terminal. There is some backtracking in the surge. So level 55, now you can also, I believe do this in New Game Plus, but once you hit or level or suit level 55, you can come back and you can open up that terminal, which we will do much, much later on. But this is one of the first shortcuts that we get, opening this door, and yes, I will grab that audio log here soon. And running through this tunnel, we will see there is the med station right there so now once we exit that med station if we'd like we can just come straight this way the surge is excellent at providing cutbacks and shortcuts all over the place so be thorough in your adventuring because you'll find quicker ways back i can't believe they just fired dr chavez after the years of hard work and dedication she's put into this company i, I suppose that's what you get when you stand up for your convictions the worrying thing is she's right i've seen the data We've got to keep working, now more than ever. Lesser people would give up, but she's not one of them. And, and if she won't, I won't. Okay, I just took a, a senseless hit there, but that audio log is referencing Melissa Chavez. We're actually going to meet Dr. Chavez later on. But that employee was saying, I just can't believe that they fired her. Well, we're going to begin to understand why they did. Whether or not you agree with it will be another point entirely. Now, because at this point I should have all of the head pieces that I need, I'm now going to focus on the chest. Oh, there's a big hit, unfortunately. And get the cut, get some health back, and get some body gear. So we need two more bodies. Not going to worry about, or not going to worry about healing. They should be able to do so. 
There's the deflection. Perfect. Oh, and you can see that was a bit of a special move by deflecting him. Try and get it again. If I can. Not that one. That one's a little bit harder to deflect. As is that one. Come on, give me the big swing around. There it is. Oh, didn't get it. And, wow. This guy's being a bit of a, a trolley troll. All right, here we go. Cut him in half, get some health back. And that should be the last body gear that we need. So now I'm going to focus on the legs. Because I need one more leg. You can see this guy has some to spare. And I can get a backstab if I'm careful. Understand it's not, you know, a true backstab. Because you're not actually, you know, stabbing anyone. But watch it. Oh, I'm not going to get a cut here. Yep. All right. That's a shame because I do need that health. New implant. Plasmic Regenerator. Health restored three for every second. So this is an injectable that heals you over time. It lasts 30 seconds. So this is technically better than the other injection that we have. Vital injection is going to give us, where is it? 80 health instantly. It does take three core power. This only takes two core power and in essence will heal 90 HP. The problem is it does so over 30 seconds. So if you're somewhere safe and if you are someone who likes to just, you know, run away from danger, that is actually a pretty solid option as far as keeping yourself topped off. And let's see. What do we want here? Legs? Let's go legs. That was a massive, massive hit. And let's get the cut. Perfect. So that should be all of the legs that we need. The other thing that we're going to have to worry about if we're going to craft all this armor is whether or not we're going to be able to use it with our existing core power. All right, you, come this way. What do I need? Let's get arms. Come on. Don't do your giant swings. I'm not a fan. There's a deflection. Watch it. I'm kind of stuck here, and I'm not loving it. Come on. Do something I can uh, safely punish. There we go. There we go. All right. So we did just get some tungsten alloy in the arm gear. Arm gear should be plenty. We're going to get that item from dropping down. Breaking through this boxes. You can see we do have a door here that doesn't open from this side. This is going to be once we go through all the way down through some of the lower catwalks and sewers. We're going to pop back out there. Or we can pop back out there. All right, I'm gonna still, hmm. He doesn't have an armored arm, so I'll just go for legs. I always like to get a cut if I can, although some of the enemies later, it is definitely safer to not worry about cuts because if you focus on the unarmored portion, you kill them a lot quicker. So there's that. Oh, got my proficiency up to level two. I'm gonna switch back to my Viper Cutter, big fan. And overcharging this, we're going to get yet another shortcut. We're also going to get access to an area that has a very dangerous enemy. Someone that I do recommend you kill, but you're going to have to watch me do it first if you want to have a chance of doing it without dying. But we open up that one override door, we open up this, and then we do have a couple of regular drones here. No big deal. Take them out. It's actually nice if they line up for you. Okay, well, it's nice if they line up because then you can kill them quicker, but now I'm just taking damage, so I'm going to unfortunately have to use my injectable. That's okay. Almost dead. And toast. There we go. So just again, to kind of give you the idea, the lay of the land, there's the med station. Here is the previous shortcut we unlocked, and then, of course, the way around that we first took was right over there. So from here, we have a couple of options. Like I said, we have that super dangerous enemy that I am going to avoid for now. I'm actually going to wait until we have some better gear. We can use this exo lift just to get this piece of loot right over here. It's just some material scrap. And then nothing further down there. But it does give you kind of a glimpse of some other places you're going to want to explore. Like that item right there. All in good time, though. All in good time. All right, back down. We weren't done inside the building yet, so before we go and tackle anything else, we're gonna head back in there. Because we do have a little bit more 
just on the other side. And yes, another door that we're going to open from the other side. We have this enemy. And backstab. And nice charge. Horizontal or vertical, rather. And get the cut. Perfect. More alloys, more arm gear, and we get another pile of scrap. Now, I'm going to double check before we head out because I want to make sure I do have everything that I wanted in order to do it. So, we need a total of 8 force regulators, 12 rake armatures, 10 cortical processors, and 6 pneumatic helixes. Do I have all those? This would be 12. That would be 9. Okay, so I actually need one more chest piece. Uh, and actually, I need one more head as well. So we have plenty. Of, we need one more chest, one more head. Ah, glad I checked. Glad I checked. Okay, math. Uh... Well, actually, math was my strong suit. Hmm. So we're starting to get some more helpful messages, I guess, from some of the employees, like burns like hell. And yes, all that liquid around us, it does burn. It is corrosive, and it will do damage. And we also get another message that says stay away. And right over there, see that blinking light? That's an enemy that's not difficult to kill, and it's worth killing because you get a unique drop from him, and you get a lot of scrap. But most of his attacks, if not all, will one-shot you. He's not hard, but you have to be very careful. All right, now for this item, I'm going to jump because I do not want to actually get stuck in there. And we got the reinforced pipe, which this is our first staff weapon take a look here this is actually a staff kind of like a bow it doesn't do a lot of damage it has medium swing very low proficiency scaling overall this is not a really great weapon but i do want to get my proficiencies up and everything so i am going to use it just going to be very careful so why am i not going over to fight that enemy now well i did just say i wanted to get better gear but you know what i might not actually do that oh this stupid drone is on me now so we'll have to take care of him before we do anything else don't get stuck in that. But I also don't want him to drag me into that sludge. Okay, we got him killed. You can see my multiplier is up to 1.90 already. If I can get that to at least 2.0, killing this guy is going to double the tech scrap gain. Which I would like to do, ideally, but we're going to try and get it even higher before we go kill him. That is how you can get the most out of these fights. All right, there is an enemy off to the left, and I don't want to fight him with that drone. So either the drone or him needs to come to me first. I don't care which. I'm not picky. Come on. Hey. Ah. There's actually two drones. Both of these are the projectile shooting drones, so... Let's, uh, let's get his attention, maybe. He's really slow. Normally, he charges at me and jumps. Now he's taking a sweet time. Come on, but there it is. So what do we need? We need a head and... Oh, you're being... You're being bad. I don't want to go in there. Alright, I'm going to put on the mechanized implant. And I'm going to kill him instead, aren't I? Yep, bummer. Bummer, I don't know my own strength, apparently. Now, these drones can be a right pain... Because as you're killing one, of course, the other one is going to try and take pot shots at you. So if I can get him a little bit closer, maybe run away a bit. No. Here we go. Here we go. Perfect. Nope. 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 All right. Now try and get him dead before he's able to. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Nope. Don't lose my stamina. Didn't. All right. Now move because the other one is starting to target. And, ah, oh, we got hit. We got hit. I'm not going to heal. Should be okay. I don't love the moveset of the staff. I do like how far away you can get. But, uh, other than the range, I'm not loving the moveset. Not in love with it. Once again, if there's a destructible item, go ahead and destructify it. New implant, Vanadium E-Cell. This is going to give us an extra four maximum energy. So this doesn't give us four energy always. It just gives us a higher maximum. Also, something I should have mentioned. This 
as well as the actual vital boost. You can see it has a range, 10 to 30. This one is 4 to 12. The higher your core power, the higher you're going to get from this implant. You do find better versions of all the implants, but even just increasing your core power is going to give you a better bang for your buck with that particular implant. All right, so we still need chest and head. This guy's got head for us. This guy has head armor for us. Perfect. Do your swing. And oof. Hopefully I don't. I don't think I'll kill him. But one attack. There we go. That should have been enough. And sure enough, we get his headgear. So now we just need one more chest and we have enough for everything. And actually, let me go grab the item over here before I grab that audio. Oop, actually no, because that caused me to drop down. Never mind, never mind. We'll grab the audio log. Great news, guys. We finally got the new gear assembly unit down here. And not a moment too soon. The old one was spitting out worse trash than what you put in. For now, though, you'll have to manually unlock the schematics on your local accounts, at least until they update the interface. The rest is business as usual. You know, pick what you need. Make sure you got the proper materials and hit OK. So that's just telling us about the gear assembly, kind of uh, an inside way of looking at how they crafted their items. But we did also just get another vital boost implant. You will get duplicates and you can stack more than one for an additive effect, which is really nice. So if you want to stack a bunch of health implants, go right ahead and do so. You are at the mercy of your core power. All right, this next area is not too bad, but there are two projectile drones and one concussive drone. I'm gonna charge this one very quickly. Oh, really, you're gonna start out with that? That's not a good one. No, the moveset's not terrible. You do get a lot of hits out of it, which is nice. So now I just need to worry about the other, let's see. Oop. You know, might switch targets to this guy. Come on. And I'm trying to keep that little capsule in between myself and the other drone. Go. Oh, careful. Let him do his thing. All right. Charge in really quickly so he stops his shooting. Nope. He's uh being a little... Oh, he got me. Being a little elusive. I don't think I've ever had one be this elusive, to be honest. But at least he's dead, and our staff proficiency has gone up to level two. By the way, if you don't take one look at this and say, yep, that's a boss arena, then shame on you. But fortunately, even though it is an arena, it's not one that we're going to fight in just yet. Soon, but not just yet. Get that pile of scrap. Now up here, not a lot up here, but there are two enemies. And you are going to have to at least engage them at the same time. Because as you approach this one, you can probably guess what's going to happen through those boxes. And there we go. Now, luckily, this guy is a little bit faster. But, yeah, this is what you have to worry about. You really want to see both of them if you can. Now, to make this a little easier, do you have any? You don't have any unarmored parts. Oh, watch it. Do you? Do either of you? I guess not. All right, I'm actually going to switch weapons then, just to make this a little bit quicker. Because I could lose this fight very, very easily. And I'm going to get hit. Nope. All right. Phew. Watch the jump. Quickly get the cut. There we go. You do have iframes if you are dismembering. So if you see that and you're in a multiple boss fight, absolutely go for it. And what do you got for me? Big old ricochet, that's what you got. Huge damage for that. And get the cut, excellent. Whew. And we get some health back for that, excellent. Good stuff. Lots more tungsten alloy, some more arm gear and body gear. And we do get a plasmic regenerator. We've already seen that implant before, and that's all that's up here. We're just gonna push on out. So like I said, this will be a boss arena. In fact, the boss is right here. I just think that's so cool. This is the boss. You cannot wake up the boss. Nothing you can do to him yet. 
We'll be fighting him soon enough. I thought we were going to fight him this episode, but turns out I actually had a lot more to say this time around than I realized. Up here, nothing down that way. This is going to be the journey to the next zone after we kill the boss. But in order to use that, we do have to take him down. In order to activate him, we do have to go down and activate a particular terminal, which we will soon enough. But let's listen to this email. After the recent events and the continuing threat to Creo security, we are asking all employees to remain vigilant. Please, if you see or hear anything suspicious, report it immediately to your supervisor. Protect yourself, your job, your family. Terrorism is everyone's problem. Obviously, Creo has been having some internal issues as of late. Heading inside here. Let us go ahead. We're going to kill these enemies, and then I'm actually going to backtrack, and I am going to go to the med station, which, yes, it is going to reset my counter, but I have a reason for doing that, and I'll, uh, I'll explain that once we do it. Wow, that was a really quick kill. Oh, and you can see my multiplier is already up to 2.0. Hmm. You know what? I don't know. I'm having second thoughts on what I want to do with this episode. Missed. And wow, didn't kill you or get enough energy for the cut. So that's a shame. That's okay. That's all right. This door, we're going to open that from down underneath. But we'll loop around here, grab that rare material scrap. All right. So you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Here's where, how we're going to wrap up this episode. It might go a little bit longer than the first. I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to trade the boss fight. I am going to go fight that big enemy I was talking about because I do want at least a 2.0 multiplier. And we should be able to do it with our current gear. If we don't and I die, well, that's going to be a shame. But I think we can, as long as we're careful. I think I do want something faster, though. Um, not the pipe. I think I'm actually going to switch back to the Vibro Cutter. Or the Vibro Cutter, rather. And as long as we're good with our implant. Oh, we do actually have one more health implant. Okay, that's good. But we're going to fight a number of these, and each one drops the same item. We want to collect as many of them as we can, but this enemy, his weak points are only going to be his exhaust folds on the sides. He has a number of attacks, some of which have incredible range, including one where he spins around, and if you're anywhere near, you are going to take a massive hit. He also is going to let out this cloudy liquid material that not only slows you down, but it keeps you from regenerating any stamina. So if you're standing in it, you can still attack if you have stamina, but it won't regenerate until you're out or until it dissipates. All right, so. And right away does that sit attack. So I am going to do damage to his sides. He doesn't have any covers. We're going to see more later on that have those covers, which makes it even harder. But you can see that liquid, that's what's going to keep us from regenerating. So you always want to have plenty of stamina Anytime that's out. And what do you got? Okay. More liquid. And unfortunately, I'm not getting enough energy to use my implant yet. But hopefully, hopefully we'll get that soon. Okay, this isn't too bad. Like I said, he's not hard to kill. It's just it's easy to make a mistake and die here. All right, what do you got? If I was in there doing combos, I would be able to get this built up a lot faster. And you know what? Oh, no. All right, I got I took a big risk there, but I think it paid off because I did get enough energy for my injection. And you know what? Not worth it. And finish. Uh-oh. <laughs> Didn't have any stamina to finish it, but there we go. He's dead. And you can see, look at the scrap you get. 6,500 scrap because I had that massive 2.0 bonus. Excellent. And from him, we get a shining coin. Don't need that for quite a while, but you also, right around him, you get a collectible. Iron Mouse issue number one. We're going to head back to the med station, and unfortunately, we're not going to have time 
in order to actually craft everything in this episode, but I will be sure to open up the next episode by crafting an entire set of armor and improving the weapons we have as much as we can. But there we go. That is most of the first section. We still have to go downstairs and open up the rest of the doors as well as fight the boss, and then we'll be heading into area number two. But I hope you guys are still enjoying. I hope you get a chance to play the surge yourself because it is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. But thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.